After COVID, most of the country in Europe, they had one small crash in the real estate. That didn't happen in Spain. Even during the COVID time, nothing happened about the prices of real estate here. And even after COVID, the prices start to raise more. The real estate in Spain have a lot of potential, a lot of space to grow. I always say every country for sure is open for immigrants, but every country asking for it from different ways. That's how confident you are that the profit is going to be over 40%. Exactly. Because we are only also going to start with the project that mm -hmm. the yield yearly is minimum 60%. Are they predicting a crash in the market right now? I mean, nobody has a crystal ball, but people talk. Hello, it's Tara Sadat here with another episode of Price to Sell. I took over the stage again from Matt Campoli and today I am in Spain, Barcelona. Uh, we are very international. I have uh, amazing Arshin here. He owns an investment company here in Barcelona in Spain and we're going to talk about why invest in Spain and how amazing is it to live in Spain and we're also going to talk a little bit about his background because he was an MMA fighter and then he was in the Iran's karate national team and then he was into cars and then he was also into crypto investing. So a lot of good nuggets today. So now here we are in Spain, but I'm sure there's a lot of backstory starting from Iran and then Netherlands and then tell us what happened, where were you in between, what did you do and what brought you here, where you're sitting here in Barcelona in this investment company. Oof, it's, a, it's, a, it's a such a long journey, you know? Mm -hmm. Yes. When I was about 18, mm -hmm. uh, I moved to Amsterdam, where my family was. Okay. So uh, the, the first question when I was there, mm -hmm. uh, I was asking myself that why uh, so many people from the Middle East are mm -hmm. moving to Europe, mm -hmm. but there is nobody there to, to give them the right hands in order to uh, bring them the right, into the right direction. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, you, you know, I know, you know, yeah. that uh, there is a huge difference be between living in the Middle East or living in Europe or, for example, living in Canada. Yeah. For, for a person like you. Yeah. So uh, I was always wondering that um, why there is nobody there mm -hmm. in order to help the people into the right uh, direction. So uh, basically, if, if I have to talk about myself, mm -hmm. uh, I go through many ways, you know, as you explain, yeah. from fighting to uh, a car company, from car company to Crypto. crypto from crypto uh, after that make the decision that okay um, I need to change my country mm -hmm. and uh, to be honest when I uh, came to Spain mm -hmm. after a couple of times I find home here okay so uh, that was my whole journey that uh, why I decided to come here to Spain did you go to different cities in Spain or straight to Barcelona I came straight to Barcelona, so mm -hmm. let me say I was lucky enough mm -hmm. to have my family before me here. So yeah. uh, That's very true when you say why is there no help because there's not actually an entity or there's not a lot of entities when I'm talking for myself when I went to Canada for when we go there then we're we don't know anything and the people that are helping you it's either they're doing you a favor which feels very bad it's like other iranians that want to help you because they know you're going through something and obviously they expect something from you and they usually really scam you because you're new and you don't know what's the price for different things i remember when when we went from iran to canada when you're doing the exchange there's a lot of zeros uh, in iran like we we are ex that our currency is in a way that we are using big numbers so when i went to canada like we don't have anything for one rial or one toman it's like it's a thousand that's our currency so when someone was a dollar if something was a dollar we would think oh this is so cheap but it wasn't because we were we were used to the big numbers when we see something is twenty dollars instead of two hundred thousand toman we were like oh this is cheap so i got scammed a lot my mother, not me. I, I did too when we were new in Canada. So this is really good that there is an entity that this is what you do. You actually help people that are new in Spain and you're not charging them a fortune. You're charging what, what the price is and they can trust you. That is the whole thing. Basically, there are many 
let me say relocation mm -hmm. company mm -hmm. in even in Europe in Spain but uh, none of them was ever designed for uh, helping helping Middle East uh, people yeah because we come from a different mindset mm -hmm. so um, we understood this need because mm -hmm. one day I was one of them yes so uh, instead of one time, we go through that direction even twice. So um, we know what they need. Mm. That's why we create a system in order to uh, help, uh, especially yeah. um, Iranian uh, investors from all over the world, yeah. that they either want to invest in a real estate in yeah. Spain mm -hmm. to just get a golden visa or um, Iranian who just wanted to buy a business, mm -hmm. like a different franchisee. Yeah. So we study uh, um, every business okay. and we advise them what for business would it be uh, suitable for them. Mm -hmm. Or um, any Iranian who just wanted to invest uh, and have some passive income here in Spain. Yeah, okay. So either, either through their found of investment or some uh, development uh, project. Okay, so... Let's get to the meat and potatoes. I personally don't know nothing about, I mean, I do now, but I didn't uh, seven days ago before I come to Spain until you guys host me, which I really appreciate. When someone is new in, in Spain, they have some money and they come to you, Arshin, what should I do with this money? And you will tell them, okay, you can do this, 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 and why? How is the real estate market? How is the investment market in Barcelona? Why should someone bring their money here to Spain? If you're a real estate investor and you don't have this platform, you're losing millions and time. This one hack changed real estate investing for me forever. Let me show you. Our innovative platform features a powerful deal analyzer tool that gives you all the metrics you need to analyze your deals and see if the numbers stack up before investing. You can calculate returns on flips, long-term rentals, Airbnb, and so much more, enabling you to make data-driven decisions with confidence. But that's not all. Our property management tool is designed to simplify our day-to-day -day operations, manage tenants, track expenses, schedule maintenance, and optimize your cash flow all in one place. Landlord's intuitive dashboard keeps you organized and in control, whether you own one property or an entire portfolio. And the best part is, you can start for free. So stop making expensive real estate mistakes. Click the link below, download Landlord today, and start doing real estate right. Look, I'll always say, Investment in Spain mm -hmm. doesn't mean only invest your money. Mm -hmm. Investment uh, go much brighter than only investing the money. Mm -hmm. Basically, when you invest in Spain, you invest in your future, mm -hmm. future of your family, your time, quality of your life, and of course your money. Because if you are only thinking about investing your money somewhere you just only look to the numbers yes but when we are talking about investing in spain yeah i think you have to look to the numbers and yeah. to many other things yeah and find your why why you need to invest here mm -hmm. investing in spain why is it uh, um, in the last couple of years okay. uh, becoming so famous mm -hmm. because either that barcelona is one of the top 10 city in the world in terms still of, in terms of just the best city one of the best cities top 10 more or less yes okay so uh the still the prices are very cheap mm -hmm. yeah they are and uh, if you are looking to the amount of the people who are after the covid mm -hmm. who mm -hmm. coming move to spain mm -hmm. especially to barcelona madrid or south of spain in mm -hmm. uh, malaga marbella mm -hmm. and the amount of the property that exists in the market mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, is is not in balance. Mm, okay, so there's higher demand than supply. Exactly. So that's still good for um, real estate. Okay, so let's put it this way: with two types of, you would have two types of audience, investors that are only solely looking for profit, and they want to diversify their assets. So they're thinking about Spain. First, talk to them, tell them why, how numbers make sense. Well, after we're done with that, we're gonna go to people that want to move. So talk to me as an investor, when you, like you're talking to an investor that only cares about numbers. Exactly. So basically, every time when an investors want to invest in Spain, either uh, uh, only for their money and numbers or uh, bringing their uh, family in the future here, we, we go 
to the deeper conversation with them to understand their why yeah. why you want to come to Spain yes uh, and we try that find their why for them and also for ourselves and honestly Spain is not good for everybody mm -hmm. uh, there are also type of the people or family that uh, Spain maybe is not the right place for them to invest mm -hmm. or even to choose Spain as a a uh, long-term house or a destination that in the future themselves or their family come to live here. So mm -hmm. we go deeper with them. Mm -hmm. We we try to understand the why. Okay. Uh, um, when we understand they are only looking for the numbers, we will bring only the numbers for them. Mm -hmm. And when we will understand that they want to have a house for themselves in the future or a, a holiday place that they can enjoy once yeah. a while, we go also to that direction. Okay, so um, what is the highest rental yield in Barcelona? Highest possible? What, and what's the average? The average is about 5% yield. Okay. Mm -hmm. Highest, sometimes you can go 8 to 10%. Mm -hmm. But most of the time you will get this yield from the houses that you can rent them for the short term. Okay. There are not many. Why not? Because in the past... Uh, any houses could get uh, Airbnb. Airbnb license. Okay. Right now, you cannot get a new Airbnb license for a single house only if you buy a whole building. Mm. And you own the whole building, you are allowed to ask for an Airbnb license. Oh, wow. These rules may be changed in the future that they would be more flexible with that, but currently it's like that. That's why. The houses or the buildings that have Airbnb license, mm. the yield can go up to between 8 and 10%. Canada makes it really tough too for people to uh, Airbnb their properties. There's, I think that they can only do it 120 days a year. Okay, yeah. no, here they don't put any limitation for mm -hmm. how many days. Mm -hmm. Once that you have the license. So you're telling me if a tourist wants to come visit Barcelona and they go on Airbnb, they don't have a lot of options to choose from because they're not giving the license anymore? Actually, they are a lot of options because okay. um, that was one of the reasons also that the government mm. is stopped giving uh, more license, license okay. to, the, to, to everybody mm -hmm. because... Basically, the, the yield was so high that everybody wanted to get the license of Airbnb mm. and just uh, rent their houses for short term yeah. to tourists. Mm -hmm. So there was less houses for people who wanted to rent it for long term. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So they wanted to manage that problem. Actually, uh, that showed the demand, the high demand that Spain have. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, I want you to be very, very personal. Don't think of telling like trying to find out other people's why this is just solely about you why did you choose to live in barcelona what are the things that really impressed you to stay here to be honest mm -hmm. i feel always that the spain chose me okay to come here to live okay um when i came here for mm -hmm. the first time yes i just realized that is a city or that is a country that i always wanted to be you just felt it. I just felt it. Mm -hmm. And uh, because of many things personal in, uh, personally. Mm -hmm. And the weather and so many other things, you know. Um, I, I feel... And the lifestyle. I, what, what, how is this lifestyle different than Netherlands? Or Iran? I don't know how long... How long did you live in Iran for? I, I was living in Iran since I... Till I was uh, 18 years old. Okay. Long enough. So you know what's exactly. going on. Exactly. So okay. uh, I find home here. Mm -hmm. Very similar in many ways to Iran. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they're just happy people. They exactly. like to party. They're nice. They're hospitable. Um, and if you are looking also to to the country, in the last couple of years, the, co the country grew a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, many people, when they are thinking about Spain, they're thinking about good quality of life, good weather, but... If you look to the last uh, five, six years, mm -hmm. you see many big events is happening now in Spain. In Spain. Uh, Such as, like what? Like a mobile congress uh -huh. is happening in the last couple of years in Barcelona. It's one of the biggest events that is happening all over the world. Mm -hmm. uh, so 
in in many ways, Spain and big cities like Barcelona, Madrid, mm-hmm. Malaga, Marbella, Valencia yeah. is is growing a lot. So, do you, do you invest in real estate yourself? Hundred percent. Are all your portfolio in Spain? Most of them. Most of them. Most of them, and to be honest, if you are looking also to the number, mm-hmm. uh, because as I understood, you are, you are a woman that you have a, a lot of numbers. Mm-hmm. Um, after COVID, most of the country in Europe, uh, they had uh, one small crash in the real estate. Yeah. That didn't happen in Spain. Even during the COVID time, mm-hmm. nothing happened about the prices of real estate here. And even after COVID, the prices start to raise more. Yeah, that's what happened in Canada. People that bought in COVID, after COVID, they made so much money mm. because the prices dropped very much. But so this didn't happen. Didn't happen here. And uh, the reason is also during the COVID, mm-hmm. people appreciate more uh, living in a country with a good weather. Yeah. yeah. So after COVID, many people who understood that they can do their job remotely mm-hmm. they moved to a country with good weather mm-hmm. how many good uh, weather country we have in europe greece spain italy and portugal mm-hmm. so uh, many people choose for spain how are they how open are they to immigrants they there are easy way to get residency here um, tell us about the golden visa how do you get a golden visa here? Okay, look, I I would say every country, mm-hmm. uh, for sure, uh, is open for immigrant or uh, people from the other countries. Yeah. But every country uh, asking for it uh, from different way. Mm-hmm. Spain is uh, very open for wealthy people who mm-hmm. want to have a better life here. Mm-hmm and uh, invest here so golden visa is actually saying it very easily Mm -hmm. say if you are uh, if you are coming from a wealthy family and if you can invest part of your wealth up to half million Mm -hmm. you can get the residency half a million euros half a million euros Euros. okay you you buy something for five hundred thousand five hundred thousand euros by myself (laughs) Uh, no, 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 I'm just asking. If you buy something for five hundred thousand euros, then you can get a golden visa for yourself and your family. Exactly. No matter how many you are. No matter how. How many. about your parents? Mm, if your parents are up to sixty-five years old, mm-hmm. it's possible. But if they're older, is is even easier. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so we also did an amazing podcast with your wife and partner in crime, Camilla, mm. and. Um, I know that you guys did this business, are, are growing this business together. And I see that your, your office, because I've been here for a few days now, you just have a very um, family vibe here. It's not like, obviously, everyone's professional getting things done, but there's not that heavy office uh, energy. It's very, very friendly, very family-wise. And, and you also do like activities together and i heard you guys do meditations and breath work and that's that's very imp- impressive i want you to tell us a little bit about how did you learn and come about being a leader and owning your own business and when did that start and how do you do it this business start between me and camila mm-hmm. and um, i think because it started also like that we started like a yeah, small family yeah. who start with this family okay. who start with this business so grow it also actually in this way mm-hmm. okay and um, as you see also our office is very transparent that is actually how we are with uh, with our um, team and also with our client yeah. of course yeah there are no walls all, all glass no yeah because yeah. in the end uh, we would like to be very transparent mm-hmm. and understand them and help them into the direction that they really can have the uh, most benefit yeah. out of out of it. Okay, so let me ask you this. I'm asking this for myself because I know that I will have my um, real estate company uh, in the future. How are you assertive enough that your staff will take you seriously, but at the same time, nice enough that they look at you as family? 
I think it's not about uh, how we act. It's mm -hmm. about uh, a mentality and how we think. Mm -hmm. um, I think if we just have a serious mentality and move it forward, yeah. uh, we don't need to act serious that people take you serious. Mm. In the end, um, that is a wish of everybody that who can work in a, uh, in a healthy and uh, proactive uh, environment yeah. and the, 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 the job is done. Everybody is happy. So in the end, everybody understand also the, the, the vibe that is in between. So we create that uh, and act actually we just show the way the mm. rest of the team created. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's very beautiful. Yeah. So it's just the mindset. So that the mindset will reflect your actions. So you don't have to just, you don't have to act very seriously. You, you act, you treat them like family, but they know your vision and, and everything just works out. That is how it, uh, how it works here. And yes. then I, I asked this from Camilla to now it's your turn. So, uh, well, you work with your wife, so you guys are here in the office together, at home together. Uh, does it get too much sometimes, or do you guys get into uh, conflicts, or is it just, how is it? Tell me. Th that is actually a question that many people ask us, especially mm -hmm. in the beginning. Because usually it doesn't work for people. For for they get They just, they mix up the private life with the business that but uh, with the people that have the wisdom and the, the awareness that this is business here you're not my wife we're working and then and then they separate their private life so i want to know how mm. you handle that you know we are a team mm -hmm. okay. and if you if you if you see it like that yeah. and uh have same vision yeah same goal and it will work out okay you know yeah uh, and for us goes very smoothly actually good we never had any struggle with that because i think it was because of the mentality we saw it as a one goal one team so it worked i i'm just thinking it would not i it would not work for me because i don't like people telling me what to do especially if it's my husband telling me do this you know you do it i i don't think i could do that, this but but also that is the thing we never tell to each other what we have to do mm -hmm. when we are working as a team uh both of us have different talented and uh, capability. Yeah. Okay. So everybody do uh, what is good in. What what they're good at. Yeah, that's what Camilla said. Everybody has their own tasks. Everybody has their own territory. Exactly. So, okay. And I actually that the same thing happened also with the rest of our team. Mm -hmm. So everybody have their own talented and uh, capability. Yeah. So. Uh, that's very that that's very beautiful. I really congratulate you for that. Um, so let's ask you this interesting question. I think it's interesting. So when I am traveling, because I travel a lot, when people, when you meet someone, like let's say in the airport, the, one of the first questions you ask is, what do you do? And I always say, I do real estate. And I used to do real estate in Canada. Now I'm doing it in Dubai. So I say, I do real estate in Dubai. And they always ask, oh, so how's the real estate market there? And what I say is real, uh, Dubai's real estate is the second hottest market, market in the world. Dubai is, the, is one of the most popular cities in the world. And honestly, investing there is amazing. That's what I tell them. I, I'm always encouraging them to come and invest in Dubai. If you see somebody in the airport and they just ask you, so what, how is real estate in Spain? How do you, how do you, how do you tell someone that has, has no idea about Spain's real estate? What do you tell them? Good question. Real estate in Spain have a lot of potential. Mm -hmm. A lot. Okay. For example, I'm in the airport. Convince me to come and invest my money. Of course. I, I, I just tell you the truth. I just tell you the fact. Okay. And then you can make the decision. Okay. Or is this uh, opportunity, would it be suitable for you or not? Mm -hmm. Spain have a lot of opportunity. Okay. And especially the real estate market of Spain have a lot of opportunity, a lot of uh, space to grow. Okay. Uh, to be honest, I think um, Spain government could do a lot better in marketing this beautiful country than yeah. how they do. Yeah. Because many people in the world are looking for the right investment, yeah. 
second home or a place to live, but they don't know Spain, how they, how Spain okay. real is. Okay. So uh, what, why we believe that uh, Spain is a very good place right now for uh, in terms of investment in real estate. Mm -hmm. If you are looking to the even if you are looking to the numbers, mm -hmm. the prices of the real estate in Spain since two thousand eight is still lower. Look, uh, in two thousand eight, yeah. when the uh, crash happened in yeah. the whole real estate market in the world, yeah. Spain was affected also a lot, like many other countries. Mm -hmm. In the um, north of Europe, uh, countries like Holland, Belgium, France. Mm -hmm. Uh, or a Scandinavian country mm. since 2008 to 2013 they recover okay. economically mm -hmm. and since 2013 to 2020 mm -hmm. those real estate market uh, goes higher okay. between 200 percent or 250 percent in some country okay. even Germany uh -huh. this didn't happen since 2013 to 2020 in Spain okay Spain took longer to recover the economy. Mm -hmm. But this growing in a real estate market, this growing real estate market has started to happen since 2021. Okay. So if we look to what happened in the north of Europe, mm -hmm. the same way real estate market of, of Spain have to go as well. Yeah, okay. So that is one reason too. No, in 2008, okay, so before that the crash happened, there was many development company in the market. Mm -hmm. Bank was giving uh, to development company almost uh, 90 or even sometimes 100% of the money in order that they buy land and they start to develop. Mm -hmm. But after the crash, what happened? Bank doesn't finance completely those uh, development company. Yeah. So what is happening right now? bank doesn't finance so much mm -hmm. spain need many yeah. much more houses to build okay. because of all the people that are starting to come in here uh -huh. and the demand is very high uh -huh. so whoever have money and invest in the development in, in spain can make a huge yield that sometimes when we are introducing it yeah. to our investors yeah. they don't believe in the first phase yeah, that we have to bring some track record of the of other project in order that they understand. So, is a Spain have a very big huge opportunity mm -hmm. if somebody invests in a development mm -hmm. or if somebody simply invests to buy a property because they can get more or less average five percent of the yield mm -hmm. uh, because of the renting. And the prices of the houses here more or less go 10 percent up yearly so mm -hmm. we are talking are, about 15 percent are they predicting a crash in the market right now i mean nobody has a crystal ball but people talk people are talking right now saying there is gonna dubai's real estate is a bubble which it's not but are they talking like that about spain we don't have any bubble in mm -hmm. the market right now okay that's good because if you are looking to the, uh, the the past couple of years, we didn't have the increase of twenty percent, thirty percent, forty percent mm -hmm. in a year. Okay. We had a we had a growth that, that goes very smoothly. Health, healthy growth, you would say. Okay, that makes sense. And last thing I want to talk about that was very interesting for any person, any investor that might be watching this. You talked about the, these new developments that you're doing in Malaga, Madrid. Uh, no. Um, Marbella, and uh, you are looking for investors to come in with you and join you in this development. And they are literally silent pi partners. They're not. They're not partners in the loss, but only in the gains. Correct. And that's very good. Tell us a little bit about that. Correct. We have now uh, many projects uh, in Marbella mm -hmm. because um, real estate market in Spain grow a lot. Mm -hmm in the last uh, couple of years, okay. especially in the luxury, uh, the luxury market. market. Okay. Exactly. So Marbella is a great place for, uh, for luxury market. So we are investing a lot there and we are uh, starting many uh, new projects there. 
Yeah. So yes, uh, we are looking for silent, uh, silent partner okay. that uh, they can have minimal yield of twenty five percent yearly, yearly for those projects. And uh, depend of the project, uh, the average uh, of the timeline of every project is between two and two and a half years. Okay. So and then afterwards, uh, the property is done. You just give them their profit and it's over they take their money or maybe they want to do it again with you maybe they just want to keep that property and buy your part buy your share so these are the things exactly that's it i mean exactly. if somebody makes money with you once they're going to stay with you normally it is like that because we yeah. can talk about investment mm. and profit uh, all day long yeah but from the moment yeah. that the uh, that people have the uh, profit in their hands, yeah. everything changed. Yeah, and then I asked you how, what do you take and how do you guarantee that? And you said that the first forty percent is all for the uh, investor. Exactly. So that's how confident you are that any if you, anything that comes after forty percent is yours. No, normal. Yes, more or less the same, but uh, oh, after forty percent you. It's half you and then half the person. Exactly. So that's how confident you are that the profit is going to be over 40%. Exactly. That's exactly. amazing. Because we are only also going to start with the project that mm -hmm. uh, the yield yearly is minimum 60%. Mm -hmm. In the worst cases, the minimum of the yield would be 80, 60%, but actually normally would be around 80 or 90% in two years. Oh, what do you mean? You said 25 that is that is the minimum that oh, we okay. calculate. Oh, okay, that's the minimum. So yes. But you go for the ones that are sixty to eighty percent. Exactly. Wow, that's amazing. So, I think it's better always that we would be about the investment conservative mm -hmm, mm -hmm. to tell the worst cases, and then whatever yeah. come after that or uh, on the top is extra. Under promise, over deliver. Exactly. Yeah. So okay. let me say it again like that: we only choose investment project development project yeah. that uh, they are giving a yield in two years up to 60 okay. percent that that can go to 80 percent as well okay the 40 percent uh, of the profit is always guaranteed for the investors okay that's amazing and honestly i feel like we can really talk forever because of the spain's real estate market is new to me and our audience are international but i think they're mostly in canada and now our podcast is international, so it's very good that you brought all this information and all these amazing nuggets from Spain's real estate market. I really appreciate it. And I I told you this before, I really congratulate you and your partner and all the family of Investate. But side note, I am just very proud when I see Persian, successful Persian people. So very, it makes me very proud and I wish you all the best and more success. Thank you so much. Thanks for being here. Yes.